Hello my friends, followers, fellow watchers of Gawain's Saga, fellow fans of GOX, other groups of people starting with the letter F, for no apparent reason. I am experimenting YouTuber and budding artist Rusel. You know, the guy who made Amy Dances to Everything and its two sequels, along with all those glorious Gawain Saga memes. Anyway, I'm here for two reasons. One, to wish GOX a happy birthday! He's now 27, if my math is correct. Oh crap, he's back up to 9 years older than me. And two, to talk about Gawain Saga. If I'm correct, I think I'm the first person to make a theory video about Gwen Saga, so I suppose we can all consider this a monumental step in the development of its fandom. Yay! Now in the great words of Wallace the Wise, It's no use prevaricating about the bush. So let's get right into our discussion of Gwen Saga, the monomyth, and what the two have to do with each other. In literature, there is a storytelling formula known as the hero's journey, also known as the monomyth. This theory for storytelling was developed and published by Joseph Campbell and published with his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, first edition published in 1949. The monomyth is basically a recurring pattern of typical events in fictional literature. The idea was developed upon study of really old folklore, such as epics and fairy tales, but it also has influence on modern stories as well, occurring on all mediums. Books like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, movies like Star Wars and Avatar, and even video games like Undertale and Tomb Raider follow the monomyth in one way or another. Now there's not a single story on Earth that follows the monomyth perfectly, that would be a very dull story. But even if you leave out parts of the monomyth and shift the order of events around, you can see how many stories, great ones even, fit this formula and derive inspiration from it. In this video, we're going to talk about how Gwen Saga fits the monomyth, and what we can speculate about the future of the series from it. Let's start at the beginning. It turns out that Gwen Saga 001, by itself, has almost all parts of the monomyth. So what better way to explain more about the monomyth than with an analysis of episode 1? The first part of the hero's journey, and also the start of most stories, is within the known world. We learn about the hero, his home, and his way of living before the story takes place. After we're told a couple of things about Wayne, Gwen, Twain, and Vania, we hear an alarm clock ring. Geo wakes up, and we see a world similar to the one we live in, probably. Geo talks about how dissatisfied he is with his lifestyle, and how insignificant he feels in this world. Geo feels a detachment to reality, and we can see how he lets his senses go numb on the subway. He wishes he had a more important calling, even if it was in another world. And that's when he teleports to another world! Lucky guy. Falling from the sky, he crosses the first threshold into a new world where adventure awaits him. Now this is a rare instance of a story where the first threshold comes before the call to adventure, or the event that lets the hero know that they have a job to do. Once he lands in some trees, he meets Amy, who is going to guide him through Tiora. She serves as a supernatural aid for our hero. After some formalities, we see a montage of Amy showing Geo the wonders of the wilderness in this strange world, and we see that Geo has many instances where his high density comes in really handy. This represents the Road of Trials, or the series of events that inconvenience, but also teach and train the hero. After this hilarious montage, we come to a forest clearing where a wolf hits Geo with a blast of fire, knocks him unconscious, and kidnaps Amy. This low point in the adventure is known as the belly of the whale, and it typically represents a moment of lost hope, like after a friend of a hero dies, or the hero himself feels unworthy of the quest he's on. Once Geo wakes up, we see, in my opinion, the most interesting scene in the entire series. Geo meets a mysterious woman named Vania. Vania tells Geo that the universe he's fallen into is very different from his home world, which gives Geo a natural advantage over the environment and its creatures. She encourages Geo to use his capabilities for good, and to be a hero for the Tiorans. She also warns Geo that carelessness will give Geo a fate that she's already suffered. The encounter with Vania is similar to the meeting with the goddess, who is typically a mother figure for the hero. The scene could also be considered the call to adventure for the series as a whole. Vania also hands Geo some special equipment, namely the X-Visor and the X-Blade, and sends him on his way. These tools both wind up being incredibly useful for Geo, since the visor hides his identity and enables him to see everything through an analyzing lens, and the blade is a weapon that allows him to fend off Tiora's creatures and Luna's robot armies. This actually doesn't fit in with any particular parts of the monomyth, but with some stretching, we can match it with apostasis. Apostasis is normally the moment when a character reaches a state of nirvana, typically after dying, like how Obi-Wan becomes a ghost after Vader kills him. I really felt like apostasis needed to be However, it can also refer to a rise in a character's power or ability, maybe with the help of equipment, magic, or other characters. Thus, the X devices represent Geo's apostasis. 
Geo finds Amy rather quickly, but that doesn't make it any less of a mission completed. Finding Amy is the ultimate boon, or the accomplishment of the adventure's goal. Now, Geo didn't fall into Tiora with that in mind, necessarily, but considering what happens next, it turns out that this moment fits that mold really well. Geo must now escape the cave with Amy on his shoulders. The wolf chase represents the magic flight, or the hero's escape with the boon. Geo is able to outrun most of the wolves, but eventually a wolf meets up with him in midair and strikes him down. Geo gets up and realizes that the wolf pack all wants his head on a plate. But seeing how they're also after Amy, Geo just stands there and absorbs the pack's relentless blasts of fire with his incredible strength. Weakened by these blasts, one wolf leaps to strike Geo, and it looks as though this series might wind up being really short. But then, while the wolf is pouncing for the kill, Amy shoots an arrow and stuns it. This is the rescue from without. In the moment that the hero lost all hope and prepared to die for his cause, an unforeseen power saves him. Amazed and inspired by Amy's critical shot, Geo uses the X-Blade to finish off the wolves. Victory. With this quest completed, Geo and Amy feel a renewed sense of confidence and friendship. However, there is a moment of awkwardness as Geo leans into Amy, probably to test the opportunity to snag a kiss. It's clear that romantic tension is forming between these two characters, and we can refer to this moment as the temptation for the hero. Anyway, now that the episode is practically over, Amy shows Geo the crystal she collected earlier, and we get a closing shot where Vania gives us an outro narrative and wishes Geo the best of luck. Technically, Geo now has the freedom to live, and this is always the closing event of a story where the hero can now live happily ever after, now that he's completed his quest. Now of course, we know that Geo's adventure isn't really over, it's only just begun, which is also a common theme among stories of adventure. The monomyth doesn't end its similarity at 001 either. The rest of the series so far fits snugly in its mold as well, and we can get pretty far. GeoX said that the series will probably end at episode 10, and we've seen 005 and snippets of 006, which means we're already more than halfway there. In the series thus far, we've seen the call to adventure, which would be Vania's appearance and her advice to Geo, telling him to use his powers to do good. We've also seen his refusal of the call in 002. The change of his hair color alone is surprising, and he also discovers that Amy's mother is an intimidating monarch who wants to kill him at the first opportunity she gets. The first fight they get into throws Geo into a coma for three days, and when he wakes up, he thinks it's all a dream, and then starts crying when he realizes that this is his reality now. Geo finally accepts the call out of a will to survive, since Gwen is clearly on edge regarding Geo's presence, and will only keep him alive on the condition that he protects Amy and keeps himself secret. This will also represent the first threshold, since this is a point at which Geo cannot turn back if he hopes to stay alive. The hero will always have a friend, sidekick, or magical helper by his side through his journey. Sometimes this is a group of people or friends, and Geo certainly has the help of Amy and her friends, who are all more familiar with the world of Tiora than he is, and are all capable of using magic, with the apparent exception of Lainey. These Tiorans will befriend, assist, and even mentor Geo on his adventure. Their assistance and the fact that they use magic quite literally translate as supernatural aid for our hero. Geo also has the road of trials ahead of him. He is constantly attacked by Luna and her army of robots, as well as the adorably hostile native creatures of Tior. Not to mention the fact that Geo can't let anyone discover that he's human or let Amy in harm's way, otherwise Gwen would have to kill him. As said before, romantic tension is developing between Geo and Amy. However, Amy isn't the only character who is attracted to Geo. Diva has also demonstrated an interest in Geo multiple times, and Marlo has even mentioned having lascivious desires. If you really think about it, Geo is practically surrounded by attractive women on Tiora, so we can say that he faces temptation at all times. And that's all the bits of the monomyth that we can match up so far, but if you consider all the parts that are left, you can make some interesting predictions on where the show will go. For instance, we haven't seen a belly of the whale yet. There is bound to be something that goes incredibly wrong on Geo's journey. Most of the time, the belly of the whale comes after someone dies, but that seems a little dark for this series. Perhaps Geo will fail to protect his friends or his identity, which will force him to run away from Gwen and live as a fugitive. Geo X, in fact, made an old list long ago that plotted out the whole series, and it hinted at Lainey getting kidnapped and Geo being arrested. Spooky. The goddess could be a number of characters in this series. Geo may have already met her, even. If the goddess is a love interest, then it's obviously Amy, but the goddess may also be a mother figure or even just a female mentor. I won't say it's Gwen, since I think she fits another role, but perhaps Marlo might be the goddess. We might also speculate that Twain or Vania will show up later on in the series and fit this role. 
The atonement with the father may be a hard sell, since there are only a few male characters in this series pertaining significantly to the plot, and fewer still could ever be considered Geo's father figures. So let's take a look at a looser definition. Fathers are generally seen as stern men who look after and teach children, even if it's with an iron hand. The father figure in many stories is someone who subdues the hero until he has matured, and he generally controls the hero with something he values greatly, such as love, money, or life. Perhaps this father isn't even a man. Who in Gwen Saga is stern, hopes to teach or train Geo, and has a hand on his kill switch? That's right, it's Gwen. Gwen is stern, controls Geo with a threat on his life, and wants him to learn how to protect Amy. It's hard to see at a glance. In fact, she might not even realize it yet. But Gwen is actually a father figure for Geo. This is where the atonement with the father comes in. If the hero or his father perform a colossal failure or feel regretful of their relationship, there is a moment of apologies and renewed love. I think that one day Gwen will realize that she values Gio's life too much to kill him at will, as she's threatened time and time again. Maybe she'll deliberately refuse to kill Gio after he makes a mistake that results in harm befalling Amy. Generally, I really hope a friendly relationship develops between Gwen and Gio. The epostasis, like said before, is a moment where the hero learns or develops something powerful that lets him complete the journey. I think this screams the idea that Gia will eventually learn how to use magic. Luna has demonstrated her immense technological power and has managed to defeat Gio a few times with it, and it's clear that she could easily overpower him if she decided to not let him win. Learning to use magic may put Gio in a powerful position where he now has the capability to defeat Luna, should the occasion arise. That brings us to the rescue from without. A final confrontation with Luna won't be easy. If Luna can take Geo down and render him powerless, it will appear as though all hope is lost. Then an unexpected source brings him aid at the last second and puts the odds back in his favor. I think this could mean Vanya reappears, or Amy just saves Geo like she did in Over 1. The ultimate boon is the success of the quest the hero is on. Geo probably wants to return home. So this would imply finding a device or portal that can send him back to Earth. Now most heroes refuse the call to return at first, since they found happiness and made new friends in their quest in the once unknown world. I don't think Geo will be any different. Leaving Tiora may very well mean that he will never come back to see Amy, Gwen, Diva, Agni, Marlo, or any of his new friends again. It's going to be a tear-jerking departure, but Geo must eventually realize that his life back on Earth awaits him. The transportation back to Earth is the magical flight, the means used to take the hero back home when the quest is completed. Once he's on Earth, he's across the return threshold, and now he's home, now with new experiences and greater knowledge and happiness than he had before the adventure. This knowledge and experience will let Geo live on Earth with a new sense of purpose and confidence. He will no longer live the way he did before the adventure, feeling insignificant and without purpose. Geo has become the master of two worlds and now has the freedom to live as happily as he wishes. The series concludes on his last nappy note, the story ends, and the hero moves on. So now we can see how Gwen Saga fits the monomyth, and how that may foreshadow the future of the series. What do you guys think? Do you believe the monomyth is accurate for Gwen Saga? Do you now have a better understanding of how great stories are narrated? Do you now secretly hope that I'm right? Or do you think that the story will be told some other way? Leave a response in the comments section and tell me what you think. I'd love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to show your support by liking and subscribing, even though I don't deserve it. <laughs> I'll see you all next time. Bye for now! Geo talks about how dissatisfied he is with his lifestyle and how insignificant he feels in this world. Well, he's wrong! Ah!